Right. Cup of tea. And I want to talk about games today. I want to talk about films for a change. I'm going to try and save you a fortune at the cinema. I know nobody's going to pay the blindest bit of notice to me. But I must try to get you to watch certain films and avoid others. There's a film that's up right now. I don't think it's going to make much money. I hope it doesn't make any money. That's Grudge Match with Stallone and De Niro in. I don't need to tell anybody about what we've already seen from these two. That's apparent. Uh, but there's two reasons why you should watch this. One, from what I've seen of it, it looks, it looks like a joke film. I don't like the Nero in comedies. I know King of Comedy is one of his best films. A lot of people go on about no interest. I like him being serious. Um, and the other one is the poster for it. Um, by the way, I, I do have notes today, which is sponsored by Daily really Dunkers to help me uh, get my point across. Uh, put up the poster, go and have a look at it. And it might be Stallone, although Stallone don't know what he looks like now anyway because he's had that much surgery on his face. But go and look at go and look at De Niro's face on it. I don't know who it is. It could be absolutely anyone. I don't know. I don't have a fucking clue. It's the weirdest thing. Oh yeah, and the other thing was when he was on Grey Norton, Stallone was dressed in a suit turned up look nice after we're super it seemed like um uh, De Niro was paying homage to how he looked in Taxi Driver but Taxi Driver 2014 he was just dressed like a scruffy bastard and like he, he didn't really care no he doesn't really say much in interviews anyway I know that but anyway what else should we look forward to or not look forward to in the cinema um, well there's an easy thing to do which is to avoid certain actors if you avoid certain actors you will avoid being let down uh, don't watch a film with Bruce Willis in it again right other than possibly Looper that he did a little while ago which was fairly good he doesn't care he's tired of making films why he continues to make films I have no idea He's, he's just not interested at all. He looks at him on the screen, he's no interest whatsoever. Uh, so just, just don't watch anything with him in it. Don't go anywhere near any of his films. He's no interest in acting anymore. He just stands there. So, so there was another website that referred to him as just basically uh, a very bored and grumpy Mr. Magoo. That sums him up. I'm sure if he had hair, he'd be happy. No offense, Giles. Um, also avoid Harrison Ford films. Now I think this might be a problem for Star Wars 2015, but for 2014, if he appears in anything, avoid it. Go and have a look at him in that sci-fi one he was in last time. And he was. See, I, I, won't, I won't watch his films anymore now. I've, I've, I've given up on him. Yeah, he was a bit of an action icon, the 80s. But is it, pretty much as he sort of got into the 90s, he pretty much got the got the opinion that he doesn't need to try anymore and I know he's all but he's to act he doesn't care so avoid him what are you gonna do 2015 with Star Wars probably watch it probably worth it but I don't know but if, he's in, if he is in anything this year avoid it uh, finally contentious one for some but not for me Liam Neeson Liam Neeson was in Schindler's List and he was wonderful in that the films they're good films a heavy film and Liam Neeson can act Liam Neeson believes he's an action star now. Liam Neeson is not an action star. Liam Neeson is an old man with dyed hair and slow motion kung fu. He can't do accents. Avoid Liam Neeson. Uh, I did read someone else that somebody said to avoid Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I don't know about that. Because... For saying that, he doesn't really, doesn't really do much of the acting other than shouting at people, does he? He's not become typecast and shouting at people. He's just like, he's sort of another form of grumpyism, isn't it? I mean, people forget how old he is. He's in his late 50s, early 60s, I think, isn't he? 
Okay, films that are a couple of films here that I think you should avoid, right? Uh, one of them is the Need for Speed films out this year. Uh, we know what the games, and we know about we know about the two Fast, two Furious films, Fast and Furious films, which I have no interest in either because I'm a grown man. I'm not 15. So the idea that Need for Speed's going to be any good as a film is poor. We don't need to go into great detail about why you go from games to films because they're always absolute crap and they never work. Um, and another one that could be contentious with a few, but uh, 300 Rise of Empire. I've seen clips of it, I don't think we've even watched the full trailer, but I've little to no interest in it. I watched 300 for the first time the other night and it was like being trapped in a coma with somebody playing music you didn't like but you could do nothing about it. Um, I don't think Zack Snyder is a very good director, I think he's a moron. Uh, 300, you see, it's easy to go from Sin City to 300 in the looks department but that's where it ends. I found 300 was like a, like a kid's cartoon with as much just scenery chewing acting which is interesting actually because uh, Michael Fassbend is in that and he was in a film last night and it had him in it it had um, Hugh McGregor in it uh, it had Bill Paxton in it I think it was called something Haywire or something like that and I've never seen anything of it the, 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 it was basically a born sort of supremacy whatever type of film but the, the lead was a man it was a woman and the acting in it was all right and the fighting in it was brilliant um, and I've never heard it I was just sitting there going why did this film miss any big kind of release 2011 as well uh, amazing the music in it was really good as well and if you know anything about the soundtrack for Get Carter this film was a little bit like that so if you know anything about Get Carter no Roy Board music for that I'm a little look at that film, hey why I think it was, but you can f look it up anyway, you're not stupid. Um, yeah, back on that 300, ah, to the rise of an empire, I just thought, jeez, you are joking me. By the way, but in clear ticking is not a bomb, it's a timer for a heat lamp, for a lizard over there. Um, I just, just sat watching and then I, said, I was thinking, I don't like this film, uh, Jared Butler can't act. He's terrible. He is garbage. And people go on about like because you're an action star or you've got shiny teeth that you you, you can pull this off. And it? no, you got charisma. You know, Ball is just a big meatball, which is probably where I could start then going on about. Um, um, who's me man? I'm thinking of. Oh yeah, that's the other film that's coming out. Noah. It's just, it's not going to work, is it? What's his name? Why do I keep forgetting his name? I'll come back to it. Russell Crowe. Can't act. He's basically a curmudgeonal prick with his bad temper problem. And he's probably in that now he's just going to be a curmudgeonal prick, prick who's a smart ass. Basically, some of the best description I've ever heard. He was described as basically Ken Boone of Australia. That sums him up. Anyway, but that 300, I keep going off track. That 300 was garbage. And then Sloth turned up, and that's when I was like, why is Sloth in this film? This is weird. So, what would I want you to watch? Well, I'd like you to watch uh, The Raid 2. Now, you've seen The Raid Redemption. Now, the boss about this scene, he loves it. And I've seen it, and it is brilliant. If you lovely on martial arts, don't watch, don't watch Liam Neeson films. Watch The Raid Redemption. Ah, oh, it's the best, it's brilliant. Raid 2 uh, just looks. Watch the trailer after this all before. Fire me off and go and watch it. F track the film down. Uh, middle of this year, I think. Uh, go watch The Muppets. Yeah, I know it sounds stupid. And Rio Tip. Kids films. Um, what else? Look out for Transcendence. It's Wally Fister's first film. I think he's the, uh, the DOP for uh, Chris Nolan for Batman uh, Johnny Depp's in it, it looks like there's some it could be an interesting one you know uh, it could be a real head scratcher which you like 
Terry Gilliam's got one coming on. I can't remember what it is. I don't know if it's out this year, but that's mad. I think it will be out this year. I can't remember what it's called, but look out for a Terry Gilliam, Gilliam film. He doesn't make any bad films. He makes weird films, interesting films, odd films. I make any boring ones. Fine. I'm going to let it wait now. <sighs> a few weeks, you will see Robocop. You will see that it has been released. <laughs> don't go and watch it. Don't go and watch it because it's not an 18. Um, I can't remember the exact uh, certification in America, but when I heard what it was, it's the equivalent of a kid's film. There'll be little blood or violence of any real merit, and I use that word advisedly, because the original Robocop should never have been remade, and just like Recall, it's all Recall should never have been remade, because they messed that up too. So don't go see Robocop. Because Robocop... <sighs> Jesus, what? One of his hands isn't gloved. It is still his own hand. And I mean it's bare. This is a bare hand of Robocop. Not that, that's my hand. But it's just... You look at it and you're thinking, well, if somebody shoots that hand, he's screwed. He's maybe used his other hand, but that's gonna go... Uh, and yeah, he does talk a bit like that. Um, Samuel L. Jack, Samuel L. Jackson's in it. Um, Gary Oldman said this guy. I a few good people in it. But it's this let's make it good for the kids thing that's happened. This is quite apparent. It's going to be a kids' film of some. And you know, if you want to do your own work, you can go on about Robocop being made into a cartoon at one point, which is just weird. Cause it's Ultra violent, uh, ultra violent film, and it takes the mickey out of many, many big businesses, corporations, and society, and whatnot. But anyway, do not watch it. So there you go. I'll give you my um, daily really Dunker rundown of what you should and shouldn't watch, who you should and shouldn't see, and I shall leave you to it. Bye bye.